Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Silvia Cadena. I am a member of the MAC, a head of programs of the PINIC Foundation. And I'm very happy to welcome you to the concluding session for the Safety, Security, Stability, and Resilience track. Uh, my colleague Rajesh uh, Charia and I, who is also a member of the MAC, um, and I co-organized this, this couple of sessions, the introductory uh, session for the track, and now this concluding session, trying to capture the, um, the richness of the contributions from the community to the, the program of the IGF, and to see how this idea of organizing the program into the three main buckets the inclusion, data governance, and the safety, security, stability, and resilience one actually worked out. Um, so we have a, a small, a small group today. <clears throat> the idea for the for the session today is more about a, a conversation around uh, dividing the group into top into into sections into areas. Um, <clears throat> Uh, with the idea of uh, just discussing what are the key um, takeaway, uh, the, the key takeaways from the sessions on the safety, security, stability, and resilience track that you have attended, or the sessions that you organize in this track, that we can collect. As you have may have seen on the IGF website, there is an effort to capture the um, outcomes of the IGF into one single page, the messages for all the sessions into the three tracks, so you can see them on the main website of the IGF, a link to the Berlin messages, and it's a compilation of, of all of these uh, conversations. So whatever you discuss in the two groups that we are going to um, <clears throat> set up in a minute, um, we'll be part of how the final document for the Berlin messages on the safety, security, stability, and resilience track are organized, and that will be published. <clears throat> that will be published in three weeks after the event, right? So we have some time to refine those. Um, I've shared a few uh, Google uh, uh, documents with the organizers of the sessions, trying to capture some of that information. And the IGF Secretariat is also helping us to capture what is coming from the reports of the sessions. So it's a painstaking process to actually capture the messages. OK. OK. So um, I'm not going to sing. When I hold it like this, it feels like I'm going to sing. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the, that's the, the idea is to structure the messages that way. So please, uh, it's important that we take some notes. It's important that you take the time to <coughs> consider how those messages are coming. Uh, and we will do a lot of um, a promotion. And uh, a, it will be input for the next IGF and how the MAG designs the program. And if this three buckets worked, then maybe we will use a similar approach for the program for next year. But we need to know um, to capture that richness and, and, and that diversity from the different sessions uh, that were happening in this track. So um, I will pass the microphone to our moderator, and so you can introduce yourself. And we have two amazing men that are going to help us with the the um, uh, discussions. Um, so we are going to divide the group in three. I will give you the, the roundabout about how are we going to divide those. And we will give uh, a few minutes to Amit and to uh, Alexander to see from their experience at the IGF and how they lived the safety, security, stability, and resilience track as facilitators of this conversation. What are the messages that they have um, um, that they're seen, and hopefully, with the help of the group, we will be able to capture uh, some more of that. Um, so, thank you, Sylvia. <clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, the safety security cannot be the conclude. We cannot conclude all the time. We have to discuss and continue with this safety, security, and stability. That's the main core of our network. <clears throat> uh, day before yesterday, we have done the session. They were the groups. But now, as Sylvia has confirmed, that we are creating 
two groups for uh, so, so sorry it's three groups i'm managing one sorry i just sent okay. a message to my company there are three groups and uh, that has to be managed by different different people alexander and anit so acha they will introduce themselves Me? and the alexander and the third is silvia hasan so should i pro proceed with the distribution if you give me a second sorry i yeah. The, there are going to be three groups. So Alessa, Alexander is now been um, is going to facilitate the one on security and safety. Um, Amit, I'm sorry if I pronounce your surname wrong. Amit Ashkenazi, right? Okay, uh, is going to facilitate the one on stability and resilience and technology, industry and trade. And then I'm going to take on the internet ethics and human rights. So. I will pass the microphone to uh, or if you the two of you want to come uh, here so that you can explain a little bit about what you've seen in those tracks and introduce yourselves to the group and then we divide the group in three and we follow up. Okay? So Amit, you want to go first? Thank you. So what we've seen uh, this week is uh, the need to create more pragmatic bridges between different communities uh, talking about this issue. There is a diplomatic language, there is a technical language, there is a policy language. So this is one issue that we've uh, seen that is recurring. Many of the discussions reached a, a terminological sort of a, um, uncertainty. So one thing is the need to recognize the different I would say professions of the stakeholders. The other thing is uh, to look at the different roles that stakeholders can have in some of these discussions. Uh, states, companies, and the civil society. There is something a bit missing in the description of civil society in the formal non-state actor world, right? And we need to look at this issue in a more comprehensive way. And I think the third thing that we've seen is that uh, when we uh, look at the issues from a very practical point of view, we've heard this in several areas, then there are more uh, common grounds than one would look at at first blush. So when you talk about the big issues on a concrete use case, uh, you can have a better uh, understanding moving forward. And, uh, uh, we have just finished our discussion in this area where we've shown that uh, creating common terminology about a specific issue, in our case information sharing, can help not only domestic policymakers but domestic interoperability between jurisdictions without having to do uh, the big uh, type of or more complex uh, discussions that we may have. And the IGF is a great place for that because it includes uh, civil society and corporations which are basically players here. Thank you, Amit. So, Amit will sit on this side of the, of the room, um, Alexander at the back, and we will be at, up here. So now, Alexander. Okay, uh, I would like uh, to continue Amir's Concerns about uncertainty, but I would like to watch this from a different angle. The technologies are being developed, internet developed from very scientific or military application to the thing which came to our everyday life. And in our everyday life, we want to be really safe. So safety is really important. Feeling of safety, at least, is really very important. We want our security measures to be effective not only in technical view, but only in how it affects our society. So we definitely need to continue discussions so we can stop uh, all things that our uh, documents and outcomes and outcomes of the whole IGF is a, uh, is a final document. We need 
to go follow technology development, follow society development, and follow uh, all these uh, interactions between technology, society, also governments somehow wants to participate in this. So uh, let's discuss it. Actually, I think we will be only facilitators, so we will not bring our opinion. So please actively, uh, actively participate. Say what you've seen during this, uh, the whole week. We uh, try to record it down, and uh, other participants who, who are not just now, during the next three week period, will be able also to comment this. So please be more active, because your opinion uh, could be that one that somebody from other country or other region does not even think about. So it's important for us to share uh, our uh, findings and outcomes and possible ways of development in these areas with others to let their life uh, to be easier and maybe even more safer. Thank you, Alex. Um, so on the internet ethics and uh, human rights component, one of the two of the sub-themes under this track, um, we will be looking at the sessions that touched in um, the, the, com the contradictions basically between the human rights frameworks in a lot of the cybersecurity implementations. Uh, and we see a lot of, uh, during the week we saw a lot of sessions where um, there was um, difficult approaches, let's say that, to, to try to find the middle ground and what is the compromise and how we move um, with policy, not only policies, uh, policy frameworks, but policy implementation around issues that consider that are really looking at the different angles for safety and security. So there were several examples about how these contradictions play, and uh, we can see that in many of the, of the uh, sessions that were presented. So uh, we, hopefully we will have a, an interesting discussion about uh, what we saw in the, in the sub-themes of internet ethics and uh, human rights on this group here. So again, safety and security with Alex at the back, um, stability and resilience, uh, internet te technology and trade on, on this side with Amit, and we can just uh, break out into groups, and uh, hope, hopefully we, someone will very kindly volunteer to take some notes <laughs> that can be passed to us, and then we will work from there, and we can reconvene um, in a few minutes to, uh, uh, probably in 30 minutes to go back, look at what the group said, and then discuss as a group where we, what we see and how can we uh, take this uh, further, if that's okay with the group. Okay. So should we break into the groups and... Um, well, yes, please.
excuse me all the group leader if they are ready for uh, giving the detail of the discussion over here so we can um, mr alexander mr amir and silvia all the three groups please join me on the dais and uh, you all three can take 5 minutes each for the briefing of their group because i want to give more time to the participant for the question answers for the interactive session so please join us Yeah, I will request now Amir to please start. Thank you. So, first of all, uh, all of the participants here noted that they are not sure that we are accurately collecting all of the discussions. A word of uh, caution. So, I will uh, tell you about the themes that we have uh, succeeded in collecting, and of course, uh, the people are still here. So, if I did anything incorrectly, they will. Uh, they will chase you. So w one recurring theme was uh, the need to reflect as to the norms, process, and processes, uh, which was discussed during this week, uh, the impact and meaning of the norms discussion, and while recognizing that norms are important for consensus achievement and they are, have been an achievement, there, are, there is a continuous discussion as to their effects and the need for no, more norms. And the other issue is that norms, the word itself and the words used in the norms have different meanings to different stakeholders. And we should pay more attention to the relevant context of the way they were developed so they can be better used as means of communication between different stakeholders. And uh, the last issue, uh, regarding this uh, point is that it appears that sometimes there are duplicative discussions about norms and this can be a challenge. Um, and uh, this leads directly to the next point which is the need to enable effective civil society participation and the role of the IGF in this context. We have heard that civil society has at the end of the day, limited resources to make a meaningful um, participation in these processes and duplicative processes may strain the way they bring the messages to those that need to hear them. And at least in the group today, we heard that the IGF is a good place to coordinate these types of civil society participation. Uh, the next point is a need to create basic information about the way problems and challenges are described so they can enable better communication. And we've seen the different, uh, different uh, professions <laughs> different professions look at the issue differently. And uh, we need uh, uh, to include um, all of the professions which are relevant to the problem solving discussion here, not only diplomats and technologists, but also public policy, economists, lawyers. This has been a recurring theme because the internet is uh, relevant in a lot of different social contexts. And uh, the last point is uh, the need to look at capacity building measures which are not only technical, but are also policy and legally oriented because this is the, the way that we can help uh, 
ourselves create a common language to cooperate in the problem solving uh, of, of this area. And it will help us uh, promote pragmatic measures which will have a positive effect on stability and security. Yeah, now I will request Alexander on the technology. Yeah. Mm. Safety. Yeah, security and safety. Uh, actually, the previous speaker nearly stole on my speech. <laughs> because discussion, even from a different uh, angle, uh, have nearly the same outcomes. Uh, I will try to combine points. And again, I warn my group that if they don't like what I say, they can participate uh, and comment, file a document. Uh, so we started um, uh, from uh, understanding uh, what are actually uh, makes people unsafe, what are the treats, uh, what, uh, how to measure actions of the states. Uh, can we exchange uh, the uh, security of uh, being harmed by terrorists uh, to uh, safety of freedom of speech? Uh, also, uh, the question was raised as exam uh, exactly the same uh, as was raised during introductory question, uh, during introduction, introductory session. Uh, that the qualification of law enforcers da, does not, and security guys, governmental security guys, does not follow development of technologies, which leads to impossibility to uh, enforce the law, especially enforce the law globally, and also leads to privatization of uh, law enforcement uh, by private companies having much more qualification. Closer to these moments are education of people and information sharing. Because um, uh, not everyone knows the modern technologies and modern approaches. And uh, the most difficult topic on this uh, is that not all information is available in local language, or people do just does not know where to obtain the fresh information, updated information. The emerging technologies were mentioned that uh, technologies are rising and developing much faster uh, than relations uh, between people, that communication, that information sharing goes uh, through. Uh, and uh, it brings us to systematic uh, threats which need uh, new systematic approaches uh, to mitigating such threats. Uh. At the end, the difficult question of building new trust between countries, between companies, and between societies rises up because it's also uh, a source of difficulties of uh, enforcing security in global uh, in global scale. Uh, also, uh, participants mentioned that we need to change our traditional habits and traditional approaches to be sure that we are safe and we are ensuring safety of people around us. Question of norms also was raised, but I think my previous colleagues uh, exactly talk about this. Also, we had a little time of uh, what do we really want uh, to discuss at the next IGF. And again, the matter of trust, of building trust, of building trust between states, between stakeholders, between uh, building trust on many different levels levels was arised. As maybe as a special note to uh, MAG, the participants uh, asked about uh, continuity of their works. So that we need not, uh, that we need uh, continue our work, bringing information to people and be sure that, that the next IGF we definitely will start from something which, which is higher, which is reached higher than on this IGF. Uh, okay, what's the name? Because I was facilitating this and someone from the group will be in a better position to present the, the discussion. So my 
my friend here is going to introduce himself and share the conversation from the ethics and human rights group while I take some notes. Okay, uh, and you know, obviously feel free to uh, correct me or add any information I may miss. So, very quick introduction um, about myself. Uh, I'm Christopher from World Acquire. Uh, we are a political technology consultancy who have helped uh, several uh, political organizations and think tanks and even parties, uh, most recently at the election campaign in Thailand and in uh, Hong Kong uh, on the pro-democracy side. Um, so we discussed a lot about human uh, rights and ethics uh, perspective, and we have a very interesting panel here uh, in, our, in our team. Uh, we have at least three victims of uh, online persecution, harassment, or, or other things, and we also had other pers uh, perspectives from different um, uh, angles, different um, experiences on the internet, um, and it is really difficult to try and find a balance uh, between uh, between all these uh, issues. So on the one hand, we had someone persecuted by the the Thailand government uh, on Twitter, but uh, Twitter not being able to um, do anything about that uh, back in the day. However, uh, we discussed that all these kind of rules require, so all, all these kind of developments uh, require a lot of conversation and a lot of um, engagement with these organizations. And um, it, 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 it can be really hard because on the one hand, we want to try and build a completely uh, free internet, a free space, but on the other hand, we have uh, all these kind of issues. Um, we also uh, saw the issue of impersonation or impersonification, impersonification or identity theft. Uh, used to um, uh, to basically use your identity and and uh, and basically steal your identity and pretend to be you and say many bad things, harassment and um, there seem to be many many difficulties in in getting getting all that. Um, we had the we also had the a very interesting um, contribution from. Uh, a, a teacher here who works with young people uh, who asked, okay, if the internet has, or, or if digital platforms have all these issues, then why don't we find a new, a better product? Why don't we look for better designs, better, uh, better competitor? And, and there also we faced the conversation about, okay, all of this, there are market forces at play, there's the bandwagon effect, the social effect, um, so it is indeed hard to strike a balance. That's that's what we found. And in order to co to continue uh, finding that balance, we need to engage in more conversations and uh, find find a solution with all stakeholders of these issues. Am I right? And do you have anything to add? Okay. <laughs> On the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I guess now we, we can um, open the floor to have more questions or comments uh, from the participants of the different working group, the different uh, breakout uh, groups. And if um, any messages in particular from sessions that you attended that you would like to carry on uh, for the uh, Berlin messages, please remember that this is the purpose of, of this session to gather that insight, uh, the insight from uh, the people in the room about the, the messages that they want to carry for the Berlin messages that will be published in a couple of weeks. So I will uh, walk around with the microphone and I hope that we can have um, a nice conversation among all of us. If you don't jump, I will give you the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's just think about okay. It, okay, people thinking. It looks like the microphone works perfectly. In the <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what to say now. Okay, just to break the ice. I'm, I'm sure other people will follow. So, 
People complain sometimes that the IGF, there is not much time for participation from the audience. Yeah. So here we are. We have all the rest of the, of the session for participation from the audience. So can someone please say something? Well, it's, if, you attended, if you attended any of the sessions or you participated in any of the discussions, if there are other things that the facilitators didn't capture, and you would like to raise uh, for the reports on this track, on the safety, security, stability, and resilience track. Silvia, uh, also, well, we have breakout groups on different topics. So mm -hmm. if, if you, for example, participate in security and safety, you want to say something about technology exactly. and human yeah. rights? Exactly. That's exactly yeah. a, a right moment to say that yes. we all had discussions that that's, uh, there could not be distinction between, well, governmental things and civil society and human rights. That's, we need to cooperate between different stakeholders. So be, be that stakeholder. Yeah. Cooperate. Or conversations that you had in the corridors that were not captured in any of the sessions and there are things that you think, oh, you know, the IGF should take a look at this and see if people are worrying or wondering about X particular issue and this is not, it was not considered in the program. So it's also a space for, for those kinds of issues. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so actually, I really like the conversation we had in our group. That idea was raised about security based by blockchain, something like that, and the future of cybersecurity and the security in the cyberspace. And uh, it was before that we had a discussion ha about the role of state right nowadays uh, in the field of cybersecurity because it seems that the private company and private sectors are m much more have much more resources and uh, knowledge how to, how to keep the cyberspace safe and secure. So I, I think this one could be interesting, that digital sovereignty and a subject connected with that. And um, like the, from the broader perspective, uh, I do believe that IGF next year should, should be really focused on rule of law in cyberspace and, and uh, how we're doing in the in the field of international law and how do they apply in the cyberspace because that's the huge problem and we still didn't so solve it. And um, actually the, the United Nations is the great platform to do it, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, I'm stuck with it. <laughs> well, yeah, my, my concern is, uh, I was the one mentioning emerging technologies is that technology will accelerate so so fast and when I look at uh, the way digital supply chains are being created I think technology will not wait or will or con even seriously consider whatever governments say or do I think data will flow across borders and it will be faster, a million times faster, it will be a million times much more data, and it will lead to autonomous solutions uh, using AI and you know, not even machine learning anymore, but autonomous solution and law will fall behind and just the, the way society is going to be impacted by technological advancement will be so traumatic in the next 10, 15 years that I think we need to look at systemic answers to these systemic changes that go beyond traditional approaches, including government or companies. Thank you very much for your contribution. Anyone here that wants to share some thoughts? No? You can take this one. You can hold that one. <laughs> Should I? Okay. Yeah, so hi. So my name is David. Um, I have a, I don't know if it's related. I think it is. Um, it's, it's about, uh, there's a lot of criticism to, towards social platforms. And I uh, think part of them are right. But I also think that it's a, it's a big possibility for those platforms to, to do some good, and they're doing good in parts, 
Um, and I'm thinking of um, if you have seen if there's a earthquake, if there's uh, some kind of natural disaster or war, or there's um, there's a post about it on Facebook, and I think that's very good. Um, so my idea or my thought is that why can't we encourage um, Facebook or Twitter to 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 through the, this algorithm that understands what the topic is going on, what what is trending or what is being discussed in a group, that they show and work with the, with the researchers about facts about global warming, for instance, show facts in those spaces. I know that's problematic because that's perhaps intruding in some communities' discussions, but it's, I think it's a possibility that could be discussed, and I just would like to, to know what you think about it. Uh, so uh, my name's Liam Neville, I work for the Australian government. Um, uh, my sort of, one of the big takeaways from this week across a range of uh, panels and, and discussions is the discussion of values and ethics. And, um, you know, we want uh, online platforms to um, consider values and ethics of society in um, implementing new technology. And we want technology, future technologies or critical technologies to be developed in line with values and ethics um, and for companies to take account of their social contract to operate. Um, but I'm not sure it's clear or sort of consistent in what those values and ethics are across the world um, or even across regions, in countries even. So I, I think um, it would be good next year to have a, a more focused discussion on, on what people mean by particular values, things like privacy um, and how much how much, how important that is to different parts of the world and different people and different parts of society um, and this multi-stakeholder group. I think the, the, the conversation around definitions and clear, more clear, narrower scope is something that has come across all the three tracks. So it's, it's good to see some, some of the correlations between what are the concerns of the people that are working on inclusion and the, the people that is working on the data governance track and our, uh, our track? Because the, the, the challenge to have, people have, have clearly indicated why or what are the challenges to have global definitions, but at the same time pushing for, okay, we know they are not going to be perfect, but we need some, some sort of uh, agreements. And I, I think that is something that the IGF should um, work harder on. Please. Thank you. My name is Hans Bergmann and I'm a teacher in Germany. This is the first time for me to take part at uh, one of these IGF meetings. And um, I have to confess, at the beginning I had to understand the format of the program and who has to say what, and am I allowed to say something? Uh, do I know uh, enough to give any statement or to take part in discussions? Uh, but um, to me, the most important thing also now today and within this group, uh, at this room, um, it, it gave me an impression about, uh, about the internet community. Um, that is to say, I'm, I'm very often uh, doing research in internet, I'm using it as you do it, and, and often I do not think about the dangers and the limits and all these things. But um, now if it comes to meet people here from all over the world, and uh, well, at our table we had people from Thailand, uh, from India, from Pakistan, I don't know, from Sweden. Uh, this makes me feeling um, very really to be a part of, uh, I mean, to, to come together with people which in the virtual world of internet are not uh, uh, present in that way. And this is, uh, to me, it's important. And um, it's very, it has been very interesting to hear about the problems uh, um, people have in different parts and people have uh, had to report about things which are 
not my problems. I, 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 I'm lucky enough. I haven't been so far a victim in the internet, but it is very interesting to to um, get uh, to hear the reports from other people and to think about how we can prevent uh, these things. And um, I'm very much interested in uh, visiting uh, the next meeting in Poland. Thank you very much. <coughs> May I respond shortly? Uh, please share this information at your community and with your stakeholders and with different stakeholders in your country. So that IGF is not completely governmental meeting if it's seven goes under the umbrella of United Nations. Share this information, invite more people, uh, share with them final documents, share them findings of your sessions, and for sure share with them this feeling that you are really a part of global community which may have different issues with them. And the, having discussion is a real good thing for building, well, sustainable, secure, safe, technologically advanced and right protecting internet in the future. Sir, you are the part of the stakeholder and you have full rights to this. You can speak anywhere into any session. But don't forget that. What I just want to say, the uh, time is there. Yeah, yeah, just to remind everybody that there is an open microphone at the end in the closing plenary. So if you're interested to make a statement, that's also a good opportunity to make it in the plenary. Yeah. What I am able to gather, no doubtly, the internet communication media is a very strong media. Technology is advancing in a very high speed. But at the same speed, our ethics, our rights, our regulations, and the policies are not going in the same way. And that's the reason ki that someone do mischievous thing on the internet, and the policy makers are not able to understand how to resolve that issue timely. And this time factor is the biggest factor that destroy everything. Till the time we are able to get recover from that through that policy, by that time the damages has been done. So what I feel is that as an internet user, we should also be doing the self-regulation. While doing anything on the internet, we must control ourselves that if we are putting anything on the net and at the same time we say that our privacy is infringed, sorry. If you are putting anything on the net in the public domain, your privacy is compromised. And then don't expect ki that the, some other body will not misuse it. So what is my suggestion? Ki that put only those things on the internet which you feel ki that it is for the public domain only, not for the private domain. So as well as with the responsibility of the government, our internet users' responsibility is a bit higher to protect ourselves from the, any mischievous thing. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I think that's a, a very, very important uh, contribution. We also all have a responsibility to, you know, understand and be aware of all the issues on the internet. I'm just curious, in this room here, how many people work in the tech, like how many people work uh, representing uh, tech platforms? I don't know, like anyone from Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, big tech companies here? Not in this room, right? In the, in the other room. So I think maybe personally what I would like to see as well is getting them more involved here, <laughs> whether it's through the, through the audience or through a panel, um, through discussions, because before we can hold them accountable, before we regulate them, we need the conversation with them too. We need to make sure maybe some of them are not intentionally evil, right, and or intentionally laissez-faire and don't want to do anything, but they just need to be involved in the discussion. Um, yeah, so that, that that's a quick remark as well. I mean, if you want to say anything. Anybody wants to speak anything? Any last remarks? My request for comments is uh, open to all in the panel, and I'm speaking from uh, an Indian's per perspective. 
where uh, what are your views on how we can uh, reach grassroots in terms of security and safety because like uh, one example in India is that a lot lo uh, there's been a huge surge of use of smartphones and use by people in in grassroots level communities and a lot of them do not have an idea of how to behave online uh, or or and they have become stakeholders who are creating ripples and now intermediaries are held liable for their activities so how do uh, what, what's your take on reaching out to them uh, and also what, what's your take on using arts as a, as a medium to uh, you know reach out to them well uh, I think that IGF uh, is actually not intended to answer such uh, kind of questions it's an exchange of ideas so you can listen well to colleagues from different countries uh, understand that problems exist differently. It exists not only in India, but you also need to get back what you've heard here to understand how to apply, to tell to your government, to tell to civil society. For sure everyone is taking about need of education and changing of your habit and daily behavior because compared to centuries away and even, well, decades away behind us, the world has completely changed. But the intention of IGF for you is to listen other possible issues, discuss them during your community until the next year, bring outcomes back to us, and then do this in a circle again. So, well, how do you is actually well a bit, well, for sure you have right to ask this question, but I'm not sure that you get the only one and only right answer on this. Just listen to everyone and communicate and provide your own answers, by the way. One, one, um, will I, if I jump into answering a question, um, the in terms of security, uh, one of the concerns from the technical community that I represent is that awareness campaigns are based on solid technical knowledge, right? And it's not um, helping. The, the awareness is not about raising fear about the technology, but ar ar around empowering the community to actually use platforms and uh, uh, protocols and tools in a, in a very uh, productive and positive uh, way. The computer emergency response teams around the world, the CERT community, has a lot of materials on uh, security and safety awareness. Uh, and in, there are efforts from some of the platforms and the content uh, providers that are here, for example, that can also uh, be uh, you know, at least examples of things that you could consider, as Alexander say, is about building your own answers and, 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 and uh, you know, making your own whatever it is that you find here. But um, one example comes to mind in, from the companies that are here is Microsoft. The safety uh, chief officer of Microsoft is here, Courtney Gregoire. And um, Microsoft has done, because of the work that they are doing on providing uh, licenses for schools to use software and, and their tools in the cloud uh, for, for uh, little uh, you know, kids in, in, in schools. They have done quite a lot of modules that go from uh, primary school all the way to university. So it's same issues, but for different uh, audiences and are using art and animation uh, as a way to explain uh, how things work um, and what you can do about them. Um, there are uh, also campaigns from the World Bank and the Council of Europe that are doing uh, awareness raising on say, uh, cyber security and safety. Uh, here in Germany, there is one of the, I, I can't pronounce it, it's, the digi it's like the digital safety foundation, let's say. They have a booth uh, down there and they have their manual with all the, the materials that they are using for awareness. So there are a lot of examples that can be used, uh, but from the technical community perspective, uh, what we really strive for is to make sure that the people that are preparing those awareness materials, especially for the young uh, people, refer to accurate technical information. That's the most important part. Uh, I'm from India. I am president of the ISP association. And we are doing this awareness program into our country, especially in the schools and into the rural side. 
understanding ki that 65% of our population is from the rural digitally they are literate by using the smartphone but actually they are illiterate so how to make them to use the internet in a very ethic way is our main concern and we are doing that all the service providers into the smaller smaller district are doing the awareness program into their respective area so that one they should not misuse and second they should not be victim so that's the responsibility we have and we are doing that but apart from that sometime in our country i'm using the word in hindi chalta hai cannot be acceptable now we have to control ourselves while using the internet so that's my say to you so so i'll add just one thing um, that awareness is very important and this has been really important sometimes you need to use the law as well so what we've seen in israel is that we needed to impress specific criminal sanctions on distribution of uh, videos that were uh, taken pub privately and then distributed publicly, even though this was a criminal offense. But this signified to the users that this is exceptionally unacceptable, and there is a specific legal warning against it. So as part of awareness raising, maybe sometimes you need to use the uh, the legal uh, tool to signify that this is unacceptable and the internet and the smartphone is not a no man's land. And the other thing that also is very important is that sometimes the platforms can do more and this is an ongoing discussion. It depends on what country you are in, but uh, as users, sometimes we are after, as you have rightly described, uh, the quick gratification and we are not always thinking about the future and what the next step is and this is this is the human uh, being we're not always rational so uh, sometimes policymakers should think about the way the user with the most awareness everyone on this panel is of, of course aware but is also a user sometime and then policymakers can maybe help them not to get into a difficult situation and we see this in the most uh, important area with children. Because children, by definition, have less capabilities to understand the risks uh, and the choices that they are given. So you can give them a lot of choices, but they will not use them correctly. Therefore, we need greater responsibility on side of the platforms when they are dealing with children. So it's a combined effort. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much, uh, Alexander. Amir and Christopher for joining Fleshly <laughs> into the session <laughs> and thank you everyone for participating into this session. Feel free to write anything on the board and your uh, whatsoever the issue by chance if you are able to remember later on you can put that onto the website. Thank you very much Sylvia for this successful session and uh, I think all the things which we have discussed will go to all the techie sites very soon. Thank you very much.